Okay, hi all, this is Arjun999, and we are here. I don't really know what I want to do, but I just came up with this idea. I know C++, so why don't I teach you guys some C++ stuff. So, um, yeah, so I'm assuming that you're going to know how to download Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 Express Edition. You know, it's right... Ah, that's annoying. Okay. You know, it's right there. So, um, so when you have this, you're going to want to click on New Project, and then Empty Project, which all of our projects will be, and then we're going to enter a name, and it's going to be called, um, Hello World. And I'm going to save it. Now, this would be a good idea. On your desktop, you might want to create a new file, um, or rather folder. And then you want to say, um, like, I don't know, C++ stuff. Something along those lines, and then you can just save right in there. And then it'll save in there, and then you click OK. And then it's going to show up as this, or it might, like, delete the start page. So then you might have something like this, or you might have the start page. And then you're going to want to go over here, and you're going to right-click on source files. You're gonna get this menu, and then you're gonna hover over here, click on new item, and then you're gonna click on .cpp, the C++ file, and then you're gonna call it Hello World. Actually, scratch that. You're not gonna call it Hello World. I'm thinking of the project, you're gonna call it Main, because this is the like gonna be where all the coding is done. It's gonna be the main code file. So then, and then you get this whole text editor thing, and this is where you're gonna code. So, there are, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to get yelled at in the comment section. I'm going to say that there are two main parts of the code. Um, the first part is where you include libraries, like a library to tell you how to write to the screen, a library to handle input and output, a library to handle file input and output, math stuff, time stuff, you get the idea. So, basically, you have that part, and then you have the actual main which is a function, which I'll talk about later. And then that's um, the main part of your program where stuff happens. So the first thing I want to do is teach you about comments. So a comment is when you have two backslashes right next to each other, and it turns green in Visual C++, and then you can type for the rest of the line. And it's going to be green. And then all that's going to be a comment. It's not going to be interpreted by the computer. So you can write whatever you want in these comments. So this is comment type 1. Because there's also another type of comment, which is where you need a backslash. And then you put an asterisk, like that. And you say this is comment type 2. But the amazing part about the second comment is that you can have this stretch for multiple lines. Whereas the first one, you see it turns black again. And that's because it's not like a comment. So then when you want to end the comment, like comment type 2, you just do an asterisk and then another backslash. And then it like highlights it all, and then you're done with that comment. Okay, so this is how, that's how you do comments in C++. That's not going to be interpreted by the compiler. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just sort of going to type out all the code. And then you guys can copy the code. And, um, and then I'll explain it to you. So this is going to be a little bit quiet because I'm just going to, you know, sort of type everything out. Okay, so this is your first C++ program, and what it does is, if we run it, so it gets, it pops up this black little window, and it just prints hello world, and then when you press enter, it quits, and by the way, how I ran it, or debugged it, I just pressed F5, 
or you can also click on this little green thing as you said as you know as, as it says f5 i'm just going to do that again so you press f5 and then you get this hello world press enter and then you're done so let's let, let's look into like how this works so you have the first part of the program which is declaring libraries and stuff along those lines so the first library i include is the library iostream and the coding syntax that you use as syntax is sort of like the grammar of coding. It's where, so when you are including a file, you have to have a, um, what's it called, pound symbol? I'm thinking of something else, but, so you have the pound symbol, and then you say include, space, left angle bracket, IO stream, or the name of the file. Because there's also other files, like, for example, I could also include... Always save that wrong. Um, math dot h, or I could also include f stream. There are like literally hundreds and hundreds of libraries that you can um, download, and then do that. And I'll have a tutorial about that soon. So yeah, you have that, and then the next line of code is using namespace as std or standard. Um. So basically what that's saying is if I didn't have this line of code, whenever I called C out, I'd have to say STD colon colon C out. And a little, little bit later, when we get into more complex stuff, I'll explain why you need that double colon. But right now, that's just the rule. If you don't have using namespace SED or standard, you don't need, you, um, if you, if you don't use it, then you need that double colon. Okay, so that's what that line does. Okay, sorry for that. Um, but basically, I was stressing the importance of semicolons. So a semicolon is so important; it's like a period in English. So if you don't have it, it like doesn't compile right, and then you get a compile error. So actually, if I delete that right now and then I try to compile it, I press start debugging. Okay, why did that work? That is so. Wait. What the heck? Let's try, to, let's try deleting it there. Uh, this is not gonna work. You see? Okay. Um. So then it gives you this error. I I don't know. I didn't work for the standard. Probably some weird thing. So need some. Okay, but for the CO, you see when I deleted the semicolon, it gives me this big thing. So it's int should be preceded by a semicolon. What that's saying is, if you go to the line here, oh, it did give me the error message. Ha uh ha, -huh, it's smart. Um, int on line 16 should be preceded by a um, semicolon on line 14. Um, yeah. Okay, but moving on. So then you have this whole thing, which is called the function. I'm like gonna throw words at you. And so the function type is int, which is integer. And then it's called main, it calls no arguments. And then it this between these actual brackets, which are now highlighted, are is the actual function. So inside of the function it says C out is referring to console output, which in this case is the screen, or this black window that pops up. And then you have these stream operators, so the way that, that I like to think about it is that you have everything here, and it's being funneled into C out, okay? And then I have another stream operator, and I have end L, which means end line, and then it also funnels that in, so now if I were to add something else, it would be on a new line. And then of course I end in semicolon, and yeah. And then on the next line you have this thing called C in dot git. What it's doing is it's going to input and it's saying if the enter key is pressed, it's, it's it essentially waits there on this line of code until the enter key is pressed, and then when the enter key is pressed, it goes to this line of code, and this line of code um, returns zero. So this ends the function because do you see how it's int? The function is int. Well, that means it returns an integer. So this is how it's returning the integer. It's returning a zero. And when it returns zero, the program quits. When the function int main returns zero, the program quits. Or if it returns negative one, or for that matter, if it returns any number. 
the program quits. And then you have this end bracket, which ends the bracket started here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna move to this little thing where I ta kept talking about functions and everything. So remember that for a tutorial which will be coming up, because right now, the next tutorial is definitely going to be on variables. And you all probably know what a variable is from algebra. Um, so, basically, little squeaks preview. That's, that's a variable. And that's all I'm going to tell you. So now you're going to have to watch the next movie to learn about variables, and how to apply them, how to print them, how to change them. All that good stuff. So I'll see you there. Thanks, guys. Bye.